Australia, the, the impact of this war on the people. Can you talk a bit more about that, please? Um, thank you, Pumi. <coughs> um, and uh, thank you to everyone who made it to come and see um, the Bumali Face of War. And I'm extremely grateful to um, the um, Association of Ukrainians in South Africa, Zvinka and Katya and all the team for making it possible. And you know, for your openness for us to come and to have this heart-to-heart -heart conversation um, about the um, impact this war has on the Ukrainian women and um, children. I think um, when you travel from as far as, as, as Ukraine um, in Europe, you on one hand feel that you know we are very, very far away. Uh, but at the same time, I think in the last week that I've spent coming to Johannesburg and uh, visiting Sofia town and Soweto and um, Trevor Huddleston Center that hosted kindly our opening exhibition. And um, most of all, you know, seeing the you know, the beauty of this extraordinary country, but most of all coming to Cape Town and also just reflecting on all of the meetings we've had in this last week and seeing um, the people here and having these conversations is, is priceless. And I think it speaks to how close we are and what we share. Um, tonight I will leave um, South Africa and I'm already thinking that tomorrow I will see, um, you know, my, my uh, family and I'll have a chance to um, hug my children and, uh, and we'll probably have a um, um, calm weekend um, when I get back home. Um, but at the same time, I um, also think of um, all of the mothers and children um, in Ukraine who are undergoing this very brutal war and who in the last six months have not had a chance to um, hug or kiss their husbands or to safely spend practically any day um, uh, in the last six months. And I think um, all throughout our conversations here, we were looking with Alessa as the you know, co-founders of this Sunset Art uh, Collective of the similarities of these experiences of South African women in their struggle against the apartheid for the same liberties, the, the freedom and the dignity that Ukrainian women are um, undertaking. I think um, this was the struggle when, when that you know the normal dreams the, 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 that that you have undertaken to um, have lives full of um, ability to you know to grow to dream to fulfill your lives, and um, thanks to to this visit we've uh, you know found out a little bit more about it and we salute and uh, are extremely inspired by the bravery and the courage of the women in South Africa who. Um, you know, marched to the Union buildings in Pretoria and who had the bravery in so many creative ways to protest, you know, against, um, against the oppression. And as you commemorate, you know, Women's Month, to us, August is also very important. Um, on 24th of August, we're going to be, um, would be celebrating, but now also um, rethinking our 31 year of Ukraine regaining um, the independence and um, how joyous life has been up, you know, up until very recently. And um, unfortunately, um, this uh, coming back of the Russian or, or um, recreation of the Soviet empire is now haunting us and disrupting the lives of so many Ukrainians. I think it's a war that um, really scars every Ukrainian. Olesa had mentioned how many women have joined the armed forces. And I think when women join the armed forces, this is precisely not to have to hear the sound with which this dance started in the beginning. I think women will give anything and everything and their lives will be sacrificed so that uh, there could be safety of not having to listen to the sound to which so many in Ukraine are now subjected to. And I think we in Ukraine now stand for um, the dignity and freedom of being Ukrainian, for practicing our language, our tradition, for being able to pass on um, the centuries long um, traditions to our kids, you know, of defending our very identity of being Ukrainian. Right now I'm wearing Ukrainian embroidery shirts, shirt, and it's a, it's a centuries long art, um, which I would not be able to wear if uh, Russia achieves its goals in Ukraine, because um, the state information agency in Russia has clearly outlined what they're gonna do to people like myself or Olesa if uh, they were to win this war. I'm also wearing the uh, earrings made of um, like little plaster, and they're made by daughter of my colleague, my co-worker. Sh her mom, my colleague, had to flee to um, live in Poland right now, 
and I would not be able to wear them if Russia were to succeed because um, there is Ukraine on one of the earrings and there is a sign of trident, which means freedom, and into the Ukrainian um, national sign on the other. So I think, you know, we are defending um, freedom the same that just the women of um, South Africa who contributed to bringing down this um, unjust regime. Um, and to us, freedom is probably more important than our lives. And I think um, in years and years that you've struggled, um, you also see these archetypes um, of, um, of the women that we brought through this exhibition, being the mothers and mothers-to-be, and sometimes victims, and very in very many roles, you know, saviors. Um, the same way Ukrainian women are experiencing it right now. Um, I'm a mom of, um, you know, three, three kids. I'm a sister, I'm a daughter. Um, I have to be engaged in this war just like millions of, of my, uh, you know, sisters, other women in, in Ukraine, even though this is not the war that I've chosen uh, or that any of us, of us have has wished for. Um, on 24th of February, I woke up in, in the beautiful city of Kiev, the ancient city of Kiev, um, to the sounds of explosions, and I had about 30 minutes to gather my things. And on that day, I was not sure that I would... Um, be able to reach my sons in the safety of the other country. Um, I had to undertake ever since, you know, so many other roles because other people have entrusted their children to me um, because they were not able to care for them, my friends or my brother in case of my, of my nieces. Um, I think um, my heart has been broken so many times as so many others um, in Ukraine because we worry about our elderly elderly, not only women and children, suffer so much in this war. So, for example, my, my dad, he's, he's in Lviv, in western Ukraine, he's 85. He, ha he has heard these um, horrible sounds of air sirens and remembers them from Second World War. And he does not want to leave Ukraine. I cannot convince him to go anywhere. Um, it's his homeland and he will stay there. But my heart goes out to him every single day when on application I can hear the air sirens. And I think um, every woman's, Ukrainian woman's, heart breaks every time when we hear the news of yet another Ukrainian soldier dying and moms in Ukraine having to see their very you know, young children uh, go. But they sacrifice their lives for something more important, something that will bring a lasting peace to, to us. And I think many stories that you will see, you know, by checking out um, the works of the uh, Women Lead Face of War, um, there are so many of these stories of perseverance, and they go through generations. And it's really um, sad on the instance, because we feel that um, Ukrainian struggle <coughs> um, and suffering from first the Russian Empire, then the Soviet totalitarian regime, and now again from Russia, it, it trespasses generations. I'm the third generation of Ukrainians who has suffered at the hands of, of, uh, of um, you know, the Russians and have to start all over again or have to defend our rights and dignity. Um, but it takes also generations right now. So we have a story of a 10-year-old you know, Valeria who is a champion in checkers, and she now plays checkers and then fundraises you know, to help the Ukrainian army. Or we have stories, of course, of um, so many women who took up arms to defend. Or we have a story of doctors who, um, in those bombed-out maternity wards or even in bomb shelters, have to help other moms to be become mothers. And there are stories of older um, Ukrainians who um, are taking care of their paths, trying to bring them to safety under the most difficult of circumstances. You know, we feel that there is uh, always more solidarity among the women. Women can never stay neutral. Women see the pain and the injustice and they act on it. And our way of acting is to, you know, to, to bring uh, those stories to you, to learn more about your stories. Um, we feel that vulnerability of every woman is a everyone's vulnerability, and the power of every woman is the everyone's power. And we sincerely hope that by having these very sincere talks, um, hearing much more about the similarities of um, your struggle against the um, anti-colonial, you know, uh, oppression and and our struggle right now, um, that we hopefully, on the level of dialogue of the civil society, um, you know, can also influence the decision makers who yet have to stop being neutral and have to take the side of the good. Um, and we sincerely hope that that will happen. 
and uh, we're happy to address any questions you may have to fill in all of the gaps of maybe knowledge or understanding. We're uh, we've learned some, you know, we've learned, we continue to learn. Um, you've been extreme um, inspiration to millions and billions of people all over the world, and we sincerely hope that with your support and solidarity on the human level, that we will persist.